Welcome to Unsuitable on Ray Radio, the award-winning financial services and business advisory podcast that challenges your old-school business practices and the traditional business suit culture. Our guests are industry professionals and experts who will challenge you to think beyond the suit and tie while offering you meaningful modern solutions to help enhance your company's growth. I'm your host, Dave Kane. To run an effective business, you have to be a good steward of your company's resources. To that end, many companies have embraced the Lean Six Sigma method to improve their efficiency and overall effectiveness. But that doesn't mean that only large companies with many employees and complex processes can benefit from these teachings. Actually, many common Lean Six Sigma concepts can be just as easily adapted to help you tackle your personal workload. Infusing a few lean concepts into your daily life and the lives of your employees can be just the shot in the arm you've been looking for, and today's guest is going to identify a few ways we can manage the daily grind and maximize our personal productivity. As a Lean Six Sigma Greenbelt, Leslie Mast, a principal in Ray's Worcester, Ohio office and current director of tax services here at Ray & Associates, has incorporated many keen lean concepts into her daily workload. Today, she's going to share a few of her secrets with us. Welcome back to Unsuitable, Leslie. Thank you for having me, Dave. I'm glad you uh, trudged through the snow to get here. Yes, it was quite the experience. It doesn't keep you away. That's right. But uh, I want to begin by uh, a little bit of the current events, and and certainly you're uh, famous uh, uh, within the firm and your community as a tax strategist, planner, uh, very well versed in uh, in tax issues. In 2018, we're certainly going to have tax reform all around us. Right. You know, we're not here to talk about the specifics of tax reform, but I want to kind of pick your brain and the network, the professional networks that you are associated with. What's the general feeling of your clients and the public on this tax reform? Well, I think there's still a lot of uncertainty although that should be hopefully coming to a close here soon. Um, It's really hard to advise clients when you have two very different plans coming together and hopefully we will have some sort of clarity in the weeks to come. So I I think everybody will be excited to finally hear what's uh, on tap for taxes in the years to come. I I agree. It is It has made planning over the last uh, quarter and maybe in the next six months a little bit challenging for uh, everyone, regardless of what industry. That's for sure. So uh, I don't envy you as the director of tax services for Ray & Associates. People are probably asking you day in and day out, what should I do? Well, you know, I have a lot of good people around me throughout the firm, and I'm real good at delegating to those people. So I do try to push some of those questions off to those uh, a little bit more in the know. Perfect. And today we get to uh, take a break from tax strategy that we've all been dealing with over the last six months. So that's kind of enjoyable. We get to talk about another topic, and that's that's the Lean Six Sigma and some of the things that you have brought to the firm in your office regarding efficiencies. A couple of things we want to talk about, probably three key areas, is would be main, managing the daily grind, software sweet spots, and in the know and keeping up to date. I think those are three topics that I've heard you talk on a number of times around the firm. So let's talk about managing the daily grind, okay. which hits us all. You know, you talk about, I guess this is, is this really project management at its best? I would say so. I think anytime you have a to-do list of any kind, it's managing yourself and then managing your expectations of those above you who you got the assignment from, and it may be also be um, managing the expectations to those below you as well that you might also be delegating work to. So it's basically keeping your pulse on the project from start to finish. And it may not be just one project. It may be Ten projects. I would be thrilled with just one project at a time. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Yes. But you're a CPA. That CPAs That's right. work That's... on. You know, we're we're. You're very talented. You work on eight to twelve things at a, at a minimum. Yes. You wonder why yes. you're so tired at That's home. That's very true. Then you got to go home and uh, be project a parent. Project manage my my family as well. Yes. I... And what's for dinner tonight? By I the way, I have no idea. You don't know. <laughs> Pizza. So so the importance of of tracking what needs done and and making sure it gets done. What are some uh, some tricks or tools that that you use 
to make sure to track uh, projects? So I uh, normally travel with a notebook and also a day planner with me. I don't have anything super fancy, it's pretty basic, but I have a notebook that I track client work uh, and assignments in, and then a couple pages later I will have segment work. And then a couple pages later I'll have personal things that I need to do. So I have one place to put all those things that I need to get done, uh, whether it's tomorrow or three months from now, it's all in one place. So um, I, that might be a little different than some of the other productivity things that you might be familiar with using your technology more. Um, I love technology and I use it a lot in my daily work, but I am definitely a paper person who needs to write that line through that thing that I finish and I get some weird sense of satisfaction by crossing that out um, every time I get something done. How do you feel at the end of the day when that to-do list still has things on it. Well, that is disappointing. That never, ha that never <laughs> happens, does it? I wish it happened less. I joked the other day that I was going to change my office hours to Saturdays, Sundays, and uh, other days, 8 p.m. to like 4 a.m. so that I could get more done during the day so I didn't have so many interruptions. Um, but I do find it is sort of disappointing during the end of the day when I'm reflecting on what I got done, and there's always more to be done. But you do have to give yourself a sense of accomplishment for what you did get done during the day. And that's what I try to focus on as well. And actually, during the day, I try not to put more than about eight or nine things on my to-do list. Um, just from the standpoint of more than that, it's overwhelming. And I just cycle and I don't get anything done because I can't choose the thing to work on. So um, normally I'm shooting for about eight or so items for the day. Well, let me dig into this to-do list because I love <laughs> a good to-do list. Um, now, does your to-do list have um, like asterisks beside it or numbers like this one I'm going to do first or mm -hmm. this one I can maybe push off to two Fridays from now? What? No, I, my method is very simple. So I just write it all down. Um, as to what I want to try to get done. If something is really specific, like I know I have to have this done today, maybe I'll highlight it or star it in some way, but normally I don't um, have anything extra to it. You know, it does surprise me that you're not using, you know, technology to, to do this, but I'm hearing this more and more yeah. from people in all professions that, mm -hmm. you know, you might find a business card with notes on mm -hmm. and the back of an envelope or a piece of paper, you know, it's kind of going back to, I'll say, the old school principle. Right. It's just maybe a little easier to manage because it's right in front of you right. all the time. Yeah, and I think the electronic method works for some people. Um, it doesn't work for me, and I've realized that as much as I said, like, I, I do love technology. It does help if you have it electronically to be able to search for things. But other than that, I haven't really found that that's one method that works for me. So yeah. I'm back well, to old school paper. Old school. <laughs> and, you, and you may use that to-do list to then put something on your calendar right. for future use. So it's right. kind of a combination mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to, uh, to that process. Right. You know, let's talk about uh, software sweet spots mm -hmm. you know every organization regardless of the profession they go they they log on and there are all these icons with all this different software right and we maybe only know how to use half of it right so is that kind of a lean principle to to look at the software and the training well i think that anytime you have software involved, regardless of whether it's to prepare a tax return or to prepare a financial statement or entering bookkeeping for a client, your job as a person using that software is to figure out how to use it as well as you possibly can, to learn those extra features. Um, and you can do that by self-training. There's always tutorials that are available for those softwares. Um, YouTube is very popular for understanding how to use software as well. So I would consider myself to be a power user of a lot of the different uh, programs that we use here at Ray. Um, and I've just really tried to take the time to learn those software as much as I, as much as I can. And as we integrate uh, 
the Waffle Firm into our process and our software, um, I've really been trying to point out some of those type of things to their team as well to start to help them figure out how to use their, the software that's maybe completely new to them um, in, a, in a most efficient way. So, so in order to accomplish where, where you want to go, the training component mm -hmm. of Lean Principle is, is critical. Mm -hmm. what, what, what amount of time, how much time should we spend in training? Wow. Um, I suppose it depends on what you're training for. But um, I know it's nothing to spend, you know, a good 8 to 16 hours trying to learn a software from scratch. Um, eight hours is really the minimum. You, you could spend it really as much time as you want to allow yourself to learn some of those software projects or software programs. Um, I think the more you can dedicate to learning and training, I think the better. How often do you hear this comment? I can't find that file. <laughs> this is where I want to bang my head on the wall um, because it does happen a lot. Um, as much as we have tried to um, get everybody in the firm to um, be doing things consistently, we are really trying to get everybody on the same page and getting people to put things in the same place, one consistent area. Um, we have one um, program that we're supposed to be using every, you know, as our file box for everything. Um, not on your C drive or your desktop, get it off of there, but put it where other people can find it. And um, that way you can share those resources more easily and really um, help a more productive lean process as you're going through that particular project. How often do you step back and re-examine the lean principles? Not as often as I would like, actually. Um, in our Worcester office, which is where I reside, we go through it um, once a year, basically at the beginning of busy season. We reevaluate what worked for us the previous year, things that we might need to change or update. It's a matter of updating our team on um, maybe things that need to be changed or fixed so that we're more efficient. And it's also a time to bring up our new staff up to speed as well, because we are normally hiring people or we have interns and they don't know our process. And so it is important, I think, for everybody um, from, the, in our case, the administrative people to the partners to be part of that process and in the same room at the same time to hear what the expectations, again, the, your, your internal customers, those above you and below you, um, and what you can do to help the process go more smoothly. You know, we talk about efficiencies le leading to uh, profitability, and we all believe mm -hmm. that that's the fact. But the other byproduct is, you know, this work-life balance. Sure. That if you can leave at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock mm -hmm. instead of 8 o'clock, right. the benefits are tremendous. Mm -hmm. And what other techniques do you use, you know, and you've touched on several of them, to, to make sure that happens, the work-life balance? Well, I think it's always important to keep the end in mind. So I try as much as I can to separate myself from home life when I'm at work and vice versa. When I'm at home, I try not to check my email as much um, during the day or the evening or if I do, I'm alone, so my kids aren't seeing me do this because I don't necessarily want them thinking that I'm ignoring them or you know, I'm intentionally not spending time with them. Um, but I, for me, it's helped trying to make a clear line in the sand as to what my role is wherever I'm at. You know, we talked about technology earlier. You just hit on something I want to expand a little bit. But how many, how many people do you know, including maybe yourself or on your staff or mm -hmm. our staff, regardless of what Ray office or any office, where they look at email the moment it comes in? I think that is probably a really big problem. <laughs> and I think most professional productivity experts would tell you that is not the right thing to do. Check it maybe once um, every couple of hours. So maybe first thing in the morning 
around lunchtime and then towards the end of the day. Um, definitely not on a minute by minute process. Um, I tend to do that. Um, I do better at that sometimes during busy season, especially when I need to concentrate more. I'll actually turn my email off. I don't have any alerts popping up. I don't have any dings popping up either. Um, so I try to control that and, and eliminate those alerts coming to my attention because it's addictive and I don't want to be that person who can't put the phone down um, or the email down. So I do try to um, do a better job of that. You know, in an earlier podcast, we talked about um, uh, leadership and stress and, and making sure leaders stay as clear from stress as they can or manage mm -hmm. their stress. And, you know, it's amazing how emails are creating stress yes. for team members and leaders. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's a way that we all can get better and more, I, I don't want to use always, we'll go back to efficient, but mm -hmm. we can be more efficient. But I'm more interested in, in the work-life balance at times. Well, I think if you want your team to have a good work-life balance, don't send an email at 10 p.m. or later and expect a response because I believe that that's sending the wrong message. Like, they should be on all the time, and that's not healthy for anyone. Um, I know there are some in the firm that are super uh, customer service driven, and I understand and respect that. But there is a time where you need to just shut off and unwind and reset your, your balance and get yourself set up properly. Um, and so I think from the standpoint of setting the tone from the top, set the example of what you want to see your staff do as well. You know, let's, let's switch directions a little bit and talk about in the know and up to date and 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 one of the principles you you preach and talk to us about or keep moving forward by by getting the right people informed and up to date and this mm -hmm. is really the communication mm -hmm. part of the lean six sigma principles what have you done or what can you suggest as far as the communication mm -hmm. part well i think uh, when you're making decisions it's important to have the right people in the room making those decisions so if someone has a part in the process of what you're trying to uh, update or make more efficient, then you need to have a representative from every step of the process, at part of that planning process and, and uh, redevelopment. Um, and then always keep them as up to date with changes or um, different to-dos that need to be done um, throughout the entire process. And one tool that we use from the Lean side of things is called a Kaizen newspaper. And um, those that are familiar with the lean uh, concepts understand that that's basically a mega to-do list. It has an issue column, it has the action item to be done, it has the other columns of who's responsible for it, when they're going to be responsible for completing it, and it is really a neat um, accountability tool when you are going through a large transition like we are where we're merging a large firm in or you know it can e it can be used for smaller lean projects as well good and 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 again the um, the tools that that you you've talked about you know we've had training and you have you have uh, just uh, invested in in all of this training mm -hmm. how often should we be have a refresher Training. I mean, there's a lot of good concepts, but right. in the heat of the battle, it kind of goes away. You retreat back to, to bad habits. Right, and we do like to do a lean refresher for the firm um, before busy season starts as well. So I already mentioned we do it at an office level, but I do try to do one for the firm as well. And we normally do that um, when it is uh, uh, the webinar for our, kind of our tax update. I do try to throw some lean concepts and reminders and refreshers into that discussion as well because that is one time where we have most everybody in the firm on the same line or on the same phone um, at that time to be able to communicate those kind of things. Um, we did a firm-wide lean project um, almost 10 years ago already 
and it is now time to revisit that. So I'm putting all the Ray employees on notice <laughs> that, <Uh-oh. Uh-oh. laughs> that uh, one of my goals for 2018 is to actually reevaluate our processes for the tax return process that we handle within Ray and um, you know, take the best of Ray and Waffle and merge those two together to hopefully make a better process in the end. And to also reiterate with our staff the need to be consistent and for us to try to be doing the same thing regardless of which office you're in. That is what helps the productivity, the efficiency, and the profitability of a process when you don't have to think about which office am I working for and how do they like their work papers. That is a waste of time and a waste of our firm resources if we're thinking like that. So that is a personal goal of mine to help everybody start getting going in the same direction again. You know, it's interesting how you've taken these concepts that are typically known in the manufacturing industry Mm -hmm. is where everything kind of began, Mm -hmm. and you've brought those into professional services Mm -hmm. and personal goals and also your client base. So it's so hats off to to being uh, you know famous in that area and willing to uh, you know take some hits once in a while when it doesn't work, <laughs> and um, and so so kudos to 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 you. Um, as we wrap up uh, uh, the podcast, can you give us maybe two things, your favorite processes that you embrace that would be helpful to any business? Mm. Um, I think. Uh, One thing that I would say would be remembering the overall goals of the entity or the business that you're working in and making sure that your daily goals are working you towards that end goal of what you're trying to achieve. Um, All of those things that get in the way during the day, those emails, those phone calls from clients, those are all detractors from what you're really trying to accomplish. And so it's important to keep that that end goal in mind. Great. Fantastic. Our guest today has been Leslie Mast, principal with Ray & Associates from Worcester, Ohio. And she's reminding us to keeping lean at the top of our mind. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Unsuitable on Ray Radio. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or to check out the video from this episode on Ray's YouTube channel. And remember what they say about opinions. Share yours with us at podcast at raycpa.com or let us know what you'd like for us to cover in 2018. Until next time, I'm Dave Kane, encouraging you to loosen up your tie and think outside the box. Thanks for, thanks for talking. I, I, I like, I, I, no, I, you I, 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 I